Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Don't Argue Podcast. I hope you guys are well. Thanks again for tuning in. Yes, there's another um, edition, I suppose, of me talking all things Fremantle. But before I get into it, hit that intro. Here we go. I've got two uh, stories rolled into one. Um, now, first one will be about uh, Griffin Logue. Now, it's been reported that uh, he is not going to be, um, you know, signing that paper. He's not me signing the paper um, after the offer we gave him. And the second part of, of this news uh, segment is also going to be my thoughts on a co-captaincy between Brayshaw as well as Sarong. But I understand that we'll get straight into Griffin Logue. So, it's been reported that Griffin Logue um, has rejected the $500,000 offer. And again, reports, reports, reports. Uh, from the Fremantle Dockers. Uh, initially, I think the initial um, offer was around 200000 250000 And obviously, Griffin Logue uh, said no to that. And obviously, subsequently, uh, was on the lookout for another club. Um, after trying to, I guess, negotiate, uh, things were again brought onto the table today. And um, as I said before, he rejected the offer. Now, my thoughts on this initially. Obviously, again, Griffin Logue as a player, we all know his uh, successful transition from being a defender, key defender, to basically a half forward, um, and in times also being a full forward. We understand uh, the skill and, and obviously the player that he is. Now, a lot of the arguments I think made against uh, Griffin Logue, especially when it comes to him wanting more, is, is the fact that I just don't think he's worth that much. I mean, he contributes while he does, but then if you look at other players like Banfield, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you almost think like, well, if, if he goes, you've got someone like Banfield there in, in the pocket, yeah, to, to sort of take over him. Now, obviously, again, with Griffin Logue, I'm not saying he's not anything special. Not at all. He, he, he is vital. But one thing I want to question, though, is for somebody who I suppose apparently loves being with Fremantle and loves the, the, the team and, and, and the, the culture and, and obviously the guys and all that stuff. If that is the case, why is he, why is hundred thousand dollars not making him budge? I, I think that is a fair enough sum for a player of his caliber, as well as the context behind his. Uh, you know, you got to understand that Griffin Logue hasn't had the most uh, successful journey with injuries, right? Um, he's been injured for quite some time in the past. Remember, I know as well, especially when I first sort of followed uh, Fremantle back in 2018, I was sort of left there scratching my head as thinking, who the heck's Griffin Logue? You sort of heard him, of him here and there, but you didn't really see him play, right, for quite some time. So for Fremantle to have invested a lot of their time and effort into rehabilitating Griffin Logue, uh, you know, for that for the stretch of, of cu last couple of years, for the stretch of last couple of years, sorry, and then for him to, I guess, reject the offer, Again, reportedly, um, it's 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 not great. And if anything, you probably just think, well, you go, you walk. Um, now, do Freeman will sort of uh, offer him in a trade? I mean, I don't know. Obviously, this is the the extension or, or the the apparent extension. So you're sort of hoping something sort of happens there. But if not, rumors are flying around that he's going to be heading off uh, to North Melbourne. Now, again, like I said, um, he's he's a good player. Is he a vital player? Unsure. But obviously, I'm assuming a lot of the noise regarding Luke Jackson has probably made him think here and there. And sort of thinking of him and Monday together, how do they sort of now do the podcast, right? I'm not too sure. But again, like I said, I digress. Um, it's, it's a bit of a tricky situation, particularly with Frio heading into, you know, into a big game against Collingwood. The last thing you need is more noise regarding that. I've, I've even seen some people suggest that you just drop Griffin Logue altogether. Right? If he doesn't want to play for us, you go alternatively as well i suppose we let dr dr bell do his thing and we'll see what happens but yeah i thought i'll just uh, share my points there is he worth the risk probably not you made the fuck the second part of the segment here is my thoughts on the co-captaincy now we all know what's happened this year regarding the captaincy for Fremantle. um obviously this year's leadership group has five spearheading it all but unfortunately for Nathan Fife, it just hasn't been that year for him, uh, especially with the injuries and stuff like that. It just, um, he hasn't been able to, to, you know, I suppose to get into rhythm, so to speak. So for the majority of the time, it's been Alex Pierce. And I need to commend Alex Pierce for what he's done. He's shown a lot of grit, heart determination, and low key, you can just tell that this is a guy here who actually, I think anyway, wants to perhaps have a go at being a captain. Now, Again, like I said, I'm not taking anything away from that fight and what he's done, right? But I'm saying that a leader, unfortunately, the reality of a leader is they need to lead, right? And and, and in, the, 
and none more important than uh in the sporting context i suppose you know obviously i'm not talking about anything else more serious than just sport obviously there's a lot of other things where leadership is definitely more important than being on the sports field but you get my point um in the sports field you need you need your leaders there to show to be there to be present and when you have someone like of that fife's caliber unfortunately as good as he has been in the past if you're not going to be leading you've got to look elsewhere now I touched on Alex Pierce. He's been sensational. And uh, I'll be fair with you guys. I think uh, he's done a tremendous job. However, 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 these little rustlings and a little rumbling regarding uh, two players in particular, or more so Andy Brayshaw. But I mean, at the same time, why have one when you can have both, right? Especially with the impact that both these players have on a regular basis for Fremantle on the field. Why not experiment and have two? Now, it's a bit of a well. I don't even think it's really tricky to be honest with you guys. I think I think both of them would would slide in, right? I think it'll be an easy transition. But obviously, again, um, I just think one of the reasons why we should look into this, and I think no sooner than next year. I think you do it next year. I think you press the button next year. The reason why is because these are the maturity, these are the experience. But these are two level-headed young men who, in my opinion, are very dedicated to the purple process. That, you know, they talk very highly of the club and, and others talk very highly of them. They talk very highly of each other. Um, it just seems like it's a match made in heaven. Now, obviously, what they can bring, like I touched on these, that youth, these uh, exuberance. Um, and I suppose, to be fair with you guys, and, and I look at it from my point as well, being a, you know, being a more recent Freo fan, as you guys know, um, a transition, a new chapter, so to speak, if you will. Now, like I said, it's not necessarily about throwing away what Alex Pierce has done. Okay, he's been sensational, but the reality is, I just think, uh, I just think for mine, um, Andy Brayshaw just has that X factor about him, right? Uh, not only as a player, but as a leader, you can see it. There's just something about him that that I don't know, you know. And and then he chuck and wrong, and for some reason, they just seem like a dynamic duo. And again, I need to stress, it's not necessarily again throwing anything away. You know, with what Nat Five has done, he's done this. He too, sensational, carried us. But I suppose at the same time, you know, much like his body, unfortunately, not being able to hold things, and uh, perhaps slowly transitioning into some other uh, role on the field, potentially, Fremantle needs to also, I think, transition into a new role of leadership or leader leaders, um, particularly in those two. And uh, for me, I I think that's the perfect move now. You may look at me and say that's silly. I'd rather Sarong and or Brayshaw. And you know what? Either way, you can't go wrong, to be fair with you guys. But I just think both of them, you know, it's it's they, they both have such an impact that it'll be a pity to, to have one miss out. I think personally, co-captains in this situation is warranted. Um, makes a lot of sense. I don't know. I think I'll keep it short and sweet. But yeah, I'll just... Just a little throw it there. Anyway, guys, tell me what you guys think. Thanks again for watching me. I appreciate it. If you're new, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. We're going to be going deep into the finals, baby. I hope so. Um, I've also potentially, um, if we make the grand final, I've got to be there at the MCG. Anyway, take it easy. See you guys next time. And um, yeah, give me your thoughts. But Griffin Logue, come on, buddy. Let's think, uh, you know, let, let, let's think about this before we make any, you know, bad decisions. Freo, come on. Anyway, don't argue.